this is an introduction to the topic called um, engine controls for HEV. It's more of a powertrain controls because we'll be looking at uh, uh, propulsion systems apart from engine as well because it's an HEV. It'll have an electric drive. So we'll, we'll look at some other things apart from engine. So more of it is powertrain controls for HEV, but we'll also look at how an engine control is done when we want a certain performance for um, and HEV. This topic is for students who have a bachelor's in mechanical or electrical engineering already. Um, if if you are interested into getting into model-based development, simulation stuff, the three big things that you should know is first thing, obviously, model-based development and how things are simulated using that. Um, HEV architecture, since you will be develop, developing control systems and physics-based models for hydroelectric vehicles, and then pattern controls or control systems in general to, to come up with control strategies and design those control systems for these HEVs. So what is model-based development? Um, it is a method of software development in the, in the form of mathematical models, similar to flowcharts, not, not exactly, but it's, it's a good way of thinking uh, what model-based development is. Some of the physical some of the uses that model-based development uh, can be used for is physics-based modeling of real-world systems. For example, if you are developing a control system system for a vehicle, we need to know how the vehicle will act and, and how the physics of vehicle will go, and that needs to be simulated on board. And that's why model-based development is needed to do the physics uh, physics-based modeling. It's also needed to develop and analyze complex control systems because it is not always possible in the development phase to um, test the control systems on real real objects or real systems and also it is easy to find out an optimum control system when we have the plant function or the plant model so that's why model-based development is important when we want a control systems for system for a particular plant or a particular system so just to give you another uh, perspective on this uh, here's a real world example where you can use model-based development for so generally you've seen uh, performance of a vehicle is most commonly expressed in forms like it goes from 0 to 60 miles per hour in so and so time or it goes from 0 to 100 in so and so time that that is like the wide open throttle performance like if you floor the throttle what will will the vehicle do how long will it take to get to 60 miles per hour right so small based development is a good ex good way of simulating that it's a very simple example um, all you knew all you need is a longitudinal vehicle dynamics model of an engine which actually uh, computes what are the resistive forces for the vehicle and what are the tractive forces provided by the engine or the HEV propulsion system and uh, given that how will how will the vehicle speed change over time right these things are calculated at at particular like very small instances and the smaller the instance the accurate the answer will be and this is not possible when you're doing it manually and that's why uh, model based development can be of help here uh, one more thing is these models are currently fact industry-wide use for various things one of the examples that i could think of is this is used in abs uh, anti-lock braking systems it is also looked in uh, also used in diagnostics simulate or predict how things should react and if anything does not react or act as the way it should in the model then there's something something wrong and that helps us in diagnostics as well so yeah having a lbd model of the vehicle and a performance parameter and the performance parameters of the engine which is basically speed load map, which you get from engine dynamometer testing, chassis testing, or sometimes crudely identified by doing certain course down tests and stuff. Uh, but combining those together and simulating will give you the answer. You can also simulate various drive cycles on that uh, to know other stuff like emission and that's all the stuff. Uh, again, this is a good way to simulate drag race. Drag race is basically wide open throttle performance of uh, whatever car it is. So under this topic, if you want, into, if you want to get into this topic or in general controls a um, model-based development related to hybrid electric vehicles you need to have a knowledge of longitudinal vehicle dynamics uh, so that you can come up with a longitudinal vehicle dynamics model or lbd model of a particular vehicle and then uh, evaluate the performance um again uh, you can simulate wide open throttle performance or certain drive cycle performances by combining this LVD model with a water propulsion system that you're using you can evaluate the evaluate the performance of the um, hybrid electric vehicle or hybrid propulsion system that will be coming up or 
developing uh, you can use it for that as well there are different architectures and different levels of hybridizations in hybrid electric vehicles and uh, simulating those different architectures with lbd model is a good way to understand how different architectures differ from each other um, in various aspects now getting more into hybrid electric vehicle a hybrid vehicle is something that uses two or more energy sources for its propulsion one example that i could think of apart from hybrid electric vehicle or commonly ic engine electric vehicle is air hybrid engine where there's a compressed air which is actually derived from engine and it's stored somewhere and it's used when uh, the engine is uh, engine's propulsion system or in engine structure efforts are lacking it's not very as efficient as electric vehicles but an example that i would think of uh, since this course is about hybrid electric vehicles which use which use ic engine and electric motor will be uh, limiting our conversation or presentation hence for um, those vehicles again so before understand before understanding what are the benefits of hybrid electric vehicles let un let's understand let's look at some of the limitations of ic engine vehicles uh, first thing is as we all know they create a very high pollution since there's a combustion happening of the fuels inside the vehicle there's bound to be pollution second thing is they use fossil fuels which are currently limited that non renewable uh, there are not many good alternative or renewable alternatives for this third thing is they are very low efficient right now uh, a typical um, a typical efficiency of a gasoline engine or a petrol engine is around 36% typical efficiency of peak efficiency it's 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 the peak peak efficiency of uh, of diesel engines is about 45 45% so we are not even utilizing 50% of, of the energy so most of it is wasted and when you using an engine you're not even rec recovering the energy that is wasted during braking right you're putting all this you're converting all this chemical energy into kinetic energy of vehicle and when you're braking you're just wasting it the braking energy is again wasted also the performance is limited why because engines uh, tractive effort or traction at zero uh, or torque at zero speed is zero engine cannot provide any torque at zero speed limits the performance um, of the vehicle on the contrary electric drive or motors provide their maximum uh, torque or maximum traction when the speed is zero that's the point when we need highest traction a vehicle needs higher tractive force efforts when it, it has low speed or zero speed when it's cruising it actually needs a very minimal amount of tract tractive forces or now why chevs again they almost eliminate most of the limitations that we saw in ic engines they are highly efficient because since we are combining engine with uh, an electric drive we can operate the engine in its most efficient uh, point so we can be sure we can get the 45% or the 36% efficiency almost at all almost at all times and there's regenerative braking all that energy that we were wasting when we were braking is now recovered back and stored and used whenever needed this perf performance enhancement now because the electric drive can pro provide the traction needed when the vehicle is not cruising or is at low speed or let's say if it's at a signal we can just get the traction from the electric drive the engine does not have to and even if it's working that energy is not wasted the engine is operating at its most efficient point and that extra energy that it's creating it's getting stored in uh, electrical battery em emission reduction since your engine you're using engine for a part of tractive effort or part of uh, the engine to get part of the engine performance you're not creating as much emissions as a vehicle that uses ic engine completely first thing and second thing is since you have a flexibility of operating engine at whatever point you want you can actually reduce the tailpipe out emissions here again